So we uh, told you the story of the mutant head lice <laughs> last week. And then the, uh, and this kind of makes sense. Uh, apparently it's become an epidemic and it's resistant to the over-the-counter uh, treatments that have been around for time immemorial. Uh, and one of the reasons that they think that there's so much lice out there is selfies. That uh, people are, you know, I know it's funny, Nicole, she's in there laughing, but this is what people do. And you know, it's true. Yeah, the Uh, selfie star over there in the corner. All these teenage girls get together and they all jump in the same picture with their noggins knocking together. And the next thing you know, (laughs) their skulls are the 405 for lice. Uh, To talk to us about this right now is the manager at Hair Fairies in Dallas. Hair Fairies, the head lice helpers. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome to the show, uh, uh, Lauren Hickman. Lauren, how are you? Good morning. I'm actually I'm really good. Well, I can imagine this is like the best time in the world to be a hair fairy. <laughs> of course, right? Yeah. By the way, did I mention that uh, Jillian and John are on from three to six? Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anyway, hair fairies. So uh, Dallas, is Dallas particularly known for lice? You know what? It's nationwide. Um, we have. You're not licier than other parts of the country. Oh yes, oh yes. Here in Dallas, you know. You got that big hair. Yes, big hair. Of course. Can lice live in all that spray? Can they live in all that hairspray? They can. They can, as long as you have a scalp with running blood running through your veins. You know, lice is very acceptable to you. (laughs) All right. Uh, And uh, by the way, there is an LA location for hair fairies at uh, Third and La Cienega, so that's convenient to us. Uh, so if you find yourself full of lice, then go on out there and get your head deloused. Now, the thing is, the traditional treatments, I, I remember as a kid, my mother was paranoid of head lice, uh-huh. that, that my brother and I would bring lice up. Now, first of all, we had buzz cuts. This is like a thousand years ago. <laughs> we were dodging pterodactyls. It was so long ago. But the thing is, we'd walk in the door, and the first thing that we'd have is my mother would be there with this lice comb, you know, wanting to go through our heads. And I don't ever remember her finding lice, but she was fearful of it. But they make this smelly kind of stuff that they put on a kid's head. Right. You know, a lot of the stuff over the counter is chemicals. Um, and you know what? It doesn't work. Um, a lot of that stuff is 20 to 30 years old. Um, you know, pediatricians will, you know, tell you or give you advice on stuff to use. It's just outdated. Um, you know, the, the pediatricians aren't really telling the, pe- uh, the parents anymore that um, it doesn't work. You know, they'll just quickly sign off a piece of paper and give it to someone. Um, but it's so old. The products aren't working. The lice have built up an immune to the chemical products. Uh-huh. Um, and, of course, they do kind of smell bad. Um, here at Hair Fairs, we use all natural products and has a really clean smell, and it's also safe on the child as well as the teenager and mom that's coming all in to get their lice removed. Now, what happens uh, at the end of the day, okay, uh-huh. at Hair Fairies, you've got a bunch of dead lice on the floor. I mean, I mean, you know what? who's I... got to sweep up the cadavers? <laughs> you know what? Actually, we do a comb-out method, and we wipe it on a towel. Okay. Ew! Well. So, well, you know what? We wipe it on a towel because a lot of clients want to see what it looks like. <sighs> and also, we do a count. So we do a count on the nits which are the eggs as Mm -hmm. well as the bugs, because we can kind of predict about how long your child has had it. Now, how many, uh, like, what's the liciest kid that's ever come in there? (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know what, funny story, I had a a little girl in here one time. Oh, she was a little girl. She was a teenager, a preteen. And she had been battling head lice since, I want to say she told me she was like five or six in like kindergarten. And they were buying the over-counter treatments and kept doing them and kept doing them. Um, but they weren't taking the eggs out. So when she came in, she had them by the thousands. Oh my God! <laughs> so her hair oh, was the poor thing. Now can 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 chrome domes uh, get can yeah. bald can baldies get lice? No, you have to have hair. Ah, yeah. Yeah. I win! I win! Dave <laughs> Joseph is okay. <laughs> Finally, there. yeah, yeah, and and fruit cup in there in the other room. Nothing He's to worry about. Yeah. <laughs> He's off the hook. So. Uh, so now, is this selfie phenomenon, are you finding that the selfie phenomenon makes sense? Yes. You know what? Um, you know, a lot of times there's that stigma that, you know, life is with children. But it's not just with young kids anymore. It is with, you know, teenagers that are coming in. A lot of teenagers have siblings. Um, and then, you know, if they get exposed to it, you know, they're, they're most likely going to have it. And then when taking the selfies, you're putting your head literally right up next to someone else's. If they have a bug, it can take half a second of an exposure to get head lice. Wow. 
Yes. Uh, well, it, that's hmm. it. And they jump around. Uh, how far can they jump, by the way? You know what? Actually, that is a myth. Uh, lice do not jump. Oh, please they jump. Oh, please no, jump. They don't jump. They don't fly. Um, trust me, if they did, I don't think anybody would work here. <laughs> so they just crawl. Yes. Yeah, so they just crawl from hair strand to hair strand. Okay. Let me ask you this question. Has anybody in your shop ever brought in rice for lunch? <laughs> No, they have not. <laughs> okay, you remember rice and lice. Don't confuse the two. <laughs> yes, don't confuse. You can't the put two. soy sauce on someone's head either, by the way. <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, you could, but it wouldn't. Well, really you know do what? It. It's funny because a lot of people are, and I'm a mother myself, and a lot of people, you know, like if something happens, you're like quick to go run to Google and do all the searches you can. And we get clients that say, like, I put mayonnaise all on my child's head because I heard that suffocates them, and I'm like. Seriously? No, it actually doesn't. Yeah, we get, you know, people oh, say they've used Listerine on the hair, hmm. olive oil. And it's like, no, I mean, it's a really good conditioner, I suppose. I go, but unfortunately, lice don't have a nose, so you can't suffocate them. All right. Well, if we could, that would be kind of labor intensive. Right. To have to individually suffocate each little. Thousands of lice. Little lice. How many, how many eggs can a lice uh, lo, uh, lay at one time? Well, they lay about four to five eggs a day, but a about day. 150 in their lifetime because they, um, the bug actually can live for 30 days. That's their lifespan. Uh huh. And uh, I wonder what's on their bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> Make more lice. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. All right, hair fairies. Uh, it, the uh, location here in Los Angeles is Third and La Cienega, and of course, if you find yourself in Dallas, uh, Lauren Hickman will be happy. Uh, to get the bugs out of your head. Yes. All Safe right. and efficient. All yes. natural products. All right. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. All right. Uh, hair fairies. All right. Lice don't have a nose. There you go.